In this video, we're going to be talking about a highly controversial subject. The C word. Dun, dun, dun. No, Shred, no, don't do it. Now, before we plunge deep into the C word, you're going to want to know that I actually have a free email newsletter about music theory. You get free tabs, tips, and guitar tricks. You can go further with your music theory knowledge by signing up for my full music theory course. And here's the crazy thing, you can get all of my tabs, courses, and a direct line to me by selling your soul on Patreon. <laughs> of course, the C word stands for c -c -con -con country music. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The C word stands for counterpoint. Now, it's important that you understand the history and the story behind the C word. Back in the year 666, Bach was trapped in a dungeon with just a candle and his manuscript paper. It took him 69 days, but at the end of that period, he had come up with the most brilliant musical idea ever. The C word counterpoint. Now maybe I'm embellishing history just a little bit, but it's impossible to overemphasize the importance of this concept. Counterpoint is the study of melody, or more specifically, the study of how multiple melodies interact with one another at once. Regardless of whether you realize it or not, you use counterpoint whenever you play guitar, and so do your guitar heroes. The riff Iron Man by Black Sabbath uses parallel counterpoint. Crazy Train by Lord Randy Rhodes uses oblique motion counterpoint. So what we're going to do today is talk about the four types of contrapuntal motion. I know it's a scary word, contrapuntal, uh, but we're going to break it down and make it easy. All I have to do is open up my can of WAP juice because this is going to be intense. So grab your drink. Cheers. Let's um, hydrate our internal organs before we die. Ugh, ugh. Pure trash. Fortunately, there's 69 grams of protein per sip. Grab the shirt down below if you want to let people know what time it is. I get the most hilarious reactions when I wear that shirt. All right. I'm going to put on my cans of power and we're going to travel to Planet Shred. Let's get in my spaceship and set our 666 thrusters for Sector 420. Here we go. Yes, I see Planet Shred coming, and boom, here we are in Guitar Pro, the program that makes everything make sense. Today's lecture is called, What is the C Word? Counterpoint for Guitar, with a subtitle, Four Types of Contrapuntal Motion. So we're going to start with parallel motion, the kind of motion that's used in Iron Man, like I said. It's just when you move power chords around randomly, that's, that's parallel motion. What it means is you have two voices in the power chord, right? Let's say you're on seven and nine, and you just move that shape around on the fretboard. Wherever you move it, that's parallel motion. So both voices are moving in the same direction and by the same interval. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you an example of parallel motion counterpoint here. Uh, that's the first step. So we'll start here on that seventh fret power chord on the A string. That's an E power chord, right? And then we're gonna go up to the F sharp power chord. And then we're gonna go up to G. Boom. And there's our parallel motion counterpoint. <coughs> Let's actually complete the two bar phrase here. I'm gonna go back to that one. So here's how it sounds. Brilliant. Okay, so let's write this in here. Parallel motion, tough word to spell. All right, there it is. 
This is the most practical kind of motion that everybody uses when they play metal guitar. It's most of what you hear. But counterpoint motion doesn't stop there. Oh no, there is much more to learn. So next we're going to, how are we going to do this one? Let's do um, similar motion. And similar motion is when the intervals move in similar steps, not the exact same steps. Like if we look uh, at parallel motion, this top voice goes from the note B to the note C sharp. That's a major second interval. And the bottom voice goes from E to F sharp. That's also a major second interval. So all of the intervals between the voices are exactly the same, and they're going in the same direction up, right? So the next one, C sharp, goes up to D. That's a minor second interval. And if you go from F sharp in the lower voice to G over here in the lower voice, that is also a minor second. So that's parallel motion. Now for similar motion, I'm going to keep that top line. So let's see. I'm just going to copy it over by looking at it. Right? So that's, that's the top power chord line in parallel motion. But now we're going to add a voice on the bottom a big bottom voice, like Spinal Tap. Uh, that's not exactly the same intervals. Let's see. Let's maybe do, yeah, back to nine. Okay, so here, um, let, let's listen to this first of all. Sounds pretty wicked. I can hear a riff or a song in that. And let me just label this. Uh, so this is similar motion. And you can see this bottom voice goes from B to F sharp. That's a perfect fifth. Um, but the top voice, you know, is going from B to C sharp, which is a major second. They're both going up but they're not in the exact same interval. So that's a similar interval-ish, right? Uh, the next interval is, is closer. We go from C sharp to D, which is a minor second, but then the lower voice is going from F sharp to A, which is a minor third. It's still going up, I mean, up. <laughs> but the interval in which it's ascending up is different. And that is similar motion. Now, I mean, let's be honest, like just knowing a little thing like this is totally mind blowing. It, it can change your riffs for the better and make them more interesting. You don't have to just move, you know, that power chord shape around in parallel motion all the time. It's not like it's illegal to try something else, just in case you were unaware. I need some WAP juice. To rehydrate my brain and keep it functioning because this is uh, complex material, isn't it? Oh man, today we're drinking um, lime, lime flavor seltzer, aka WAP juice. Where's my sponsorship? I want my six 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 dollars per video. Okay, is everything making sense so far? Um, that, that's two types of contrapuntal motion. So we only have two more to go. I mean, two more to go. It is stuff. It's not that hard. It's not that crazy. You just have to, uh, be aware of how these things work. So what's next? Um, let's do oblique motion. And again, I'm just going to keep that top line. This is all about making things easy. Uh, yep. Okay, so there's our top line again. It's like a melody in and of itself. Now, oblique motion, contrary to popular opinion, is not when you get jacked abs. <sighs> oh, oh, blah, blah. Out of me, WAP juice. It's when you have one voice that stays the same, but another voice moves. So it'd be like this for a visual representation. It's the same thing as pedal point. 
if you're familiar with that concept. Now, hold on a minute. I just actually screwed that up. I want to move the, um, the lower voice. So let's keep the top voice the same, right? These are all nines. And then on the bottom is going to be the, uh, the voice that moves. That way, the melody stays the same. Uh, okay, so how are we going to do this? Boom. Let's go up to 10. Okay, there. Now let's hear how oblique motion sounds. Again, I mean, that's like a cool riff in and of itself. And one of the, the best things about knowing music theory is it gives you more bang for your buck. You know, I mean, we just had one like melody here, but we're going to turn it into four different riffs, which uh, is super efficient. Bingo, bango. Let's hear everything we've done so far. And maybe you can hear which one is your favorite. That one's cool. So, it, I mean, this is the whole value of composition. Uh, there's things that exist that don't necessarily occur to your intuition. When you're sitting down, you know, um, jamming for 69 hours straight, yeah, you probably know about the parallel motion, but what about all of these other types of motion that you might be missing out on? You could be writing Spotify number 69 hits with these variations, you know? Now, the last type of contrapuntal motion is my favorite by far, and that is contrary motion. Contrary counterpoint, the double C word. Mm. Uh, all right. Now, how are we going to do <clears throat> this contrary motion counterpoint? Um, we're going to have to space things out a little bit. So I know I said we wanted to keep that top melody the same, but um, that's just not going to work for this. Uh, so I'm going to go to an octave shape. That's an octave, right? So it's kind of like instead of the power chord we we're using before, we're going to use an octave as the starting point. And then I'm going to do this. And then that. Brilliant, Shred. You did it. You did it. <clears throat> okay. Let's listen to contrary motion counterpoint. Oh, there's just something that's just right. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's the line. I, it, it, I don't know why that works so well. It has something to do with science, I'm sure of it. Um, but you can see by looking at the notes, even if you don't read music, forget about the fact that you're terribly uneducated and can't read music <laughs> just kidding what a descending comment to make lord shred but you can see by looking at those voices don't look at the tab look at the notation and you see this this contraction and expansion that is the concept of contrary motion so in the first movement here you have an e up to an f sharp note that's a major second in the top voice it's going down not up you got e down to d ed erectile dysfunction of course all of those ed problems will be solved if you learn contrary motion going to the next voice um or the next chord it goes from d that's d down to c right another second descending but then this F sharp note here goes up to G. So the top voice is coming down and the lower voice is going up. And that is contrary motion. It always sounds good. It always works. I believe Bach said that's what he just naturally shoots for um, because that's what sounds the best. So if you're ever like making a musical arrangement, just try for contrary motion. It's just what is most pleasing to our ears. Type that in here. Contrary motion. Bingo. Okay, now those are the four types of contrary motion. That wasn't that hard. Wasn't that crazy. 
Uh, but you might be thinking to yourself, well, uh, how do I actually use this, right? And I mean, honestly, you don't have to go any further than that. Each one of those phrases could be a riff. That could be a song. Uh, it, it's, it's like the music writes itself when you learn theory. Uh, but let's, let's think about like a, a more standard oh, oh, oh kind of metal riff, right? Uh, you've seen those memes all about the oh, oh, oh's. Here's one right here. Song starts with oh, 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 oh. Metalheads, oh, they love it. They fucking love it. And actually, um, it's not just the metalheads, believe it or not. This is this meme uh, describes the very foundation of tonality itself, which is a reference to the root. I guarantee you all of your favorite songs use this concept of the OOO, or maybe it's a fretted note, but the point is, is you're always coming back to that note to kind of reaffirm, yes, this is the root note of the key. This is the tonality. Uh, we need to hear that unless you're into atonal music and that's highly unlikely. So, a pedal tone OOO riff. Um, uh, what should we do? Let, let's do the contrary motion one since we just did that. So there's our 7-9 right from, from up here. That's where I'm pulling that from. Um, and then we're going to OOO it. Let's do one more. Right, okay. Um, and then we're going to take the next uh, chord from the contrary motion sequence, 9 and 12. Okay, let's put that in there. You guessed it. What's coming next? Triple O's, baby. Now that's a, a measure of music right there. And you didn't even have to think about it, right? It's like the, the music wrote itself. Okay, what's next? Tens. Tens. Uh, okay, let's put in the tens. Trip lows. Uh, and then we're back to the 912. Okay. Now, does this sound like trash or is it actually good? Let's find out. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good, right? Um, you might do like some more chug type sounds here and maybe put in like you know thicken this up a little bit let's just add a little t h i c c thickness whoa 22 way too much just the two okay so if we add the palm mute in here that's going to sound like even more metal <laughs> with my classical guitar sound here So whatever, you get the idea. You can write music really efficiently and quickly uh, and come up with a Spotify number 69 hit with counterpoint and then combining that with uh, the OOO or pedal tone. Now, of course, there is more to counterpoint. Uh, that's just one aspect of counterpoint. But I think it's one of the most applicable... Applicable. That's definitely not a word. Come on, Shred. You can do this. It's one of the most applicable concepts in counterpoint because you can just pick up your guitar and start repping some of these types of motion and it's going to sound good just right out of the gate. There will be more talk of the C word in the future. I think I'm going to tackle the idea of prime inversion retrograde and retrograde inversion soon as well. Hopefully by the end of that lesson, our brains will self-destruct and the universe will explode. Mm. Ah, now check it out sign up for my free music theory email newsletter it gives you free tabs tips guitar tricks take your music theory knowledge to the next level with my full course below in the description and if you want to reach the ultimate level 9000 sign your soul away to me on patreon that's all of my tabs courses a direct line to me you can even post your own videos. I love it when you guys do that so I can see what you're up to and see how you're applying the concepts that we're working on. Be sure to drink 69 gallons of WAP juice per day. That is all.